Hello guys, in this video I want to continue covering uh, tricky multivariable uh, calculus problems and I want to cover uh, this problem which asks us to uh, match the graphs on the left and their corresponding parametric equations on the right. So let's first try to match this first graph. I can see on this graph that my y variable is unbounded. So my y variable starts at zero and goes to plus infinity. But for example, if I'm going to take this equation over here, which is equation number six, I can see that my y is going to be bounded between zero and one. Since uh, y is equal to sine squared t, and I know that sine t is between negative one and one, so sine squared t is between zero and one. So that's why equation six for sure doesn't work. For the same reason, equation five doesn't work because sine of a t is between negative one and one. Also, uh, equation four doesn't work and equation two doesn't work. And again, they don't work because in that case, my y variable is going to be bounded. But in the graph, it's obviously it's not bounded. So the only options are left equation one and equation uh, three. And how to figure that out? I just need to observe if I'm going to take the origin point here, zero, 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 then it's going to belong to my graph. So in other words, it means there, uh, for this equation and for this equation, always must exist some t, for which if I'm going to plug in the t into my equation, I will get that my x component is zero, y component is zero, and z component is zero. I can see that for the first equation, t is equal to zero, works. So because when t is equal to zero, x, y, and z are exactly going to be zero, zero, and zero. But what I want to do, I want to make sure that t is, uh, that I cannot find such t, that x, y, and z at the same time are equal to zero for my uh, third equation. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just try to find such t. So what do I want to do? I want to find t such that x is equal to t is equal to zero, y is equal to one over one plus t squared is equal to zero, and z is equal to t squared is equal to zero. So by solving this equation, I can see obviously that t is equal to zero, and when I'm going to plug it in into the second uh, equation, I will get that one over one plus zero is equal to zero. So, but one doesn't equal to zero, so that's why there is no such t, because the only option was t is equal to zero. Okay. So, and we're done with the first graph. We can for sure conclude that uh, graph number two is going to be, is going to correspond to equation one. Okay, let's try to figure out other graphs. Uh, let's, let's just take a look and observe to find some properties that we can use. So for example, if we, I'm going to take a look at this graph and this graph and this graph, that all these graphs are going to be unbounded. And the only uh, bounded graphs are going to be this graph over here and this graph over here. So if we're going to take a look at these equations over here, then we can observe that if we're going to take equation number four, then for the equation number four, x, y, and z components are going to be bounded. And the reason is why, because they literally equals to cosine, sine, and cosine of t which are between negative one and one. But I need to decide to which uh, graph this equation is going to correspond to this one or this one. And the observation that you need to make that for the equation number six, your Z component is strictly bigger or equal to zero. But for your first graph, your Z can, can be negative. And that's why like your graph number six doesn't work. Uh, because uh, for your equation number four, your z component can be positive and negative since it's equal to cosine of t. So that's why the first graph is going to correspond to equation number four. Okay, but then we can observe that uh, then the six, uh, graph number six is going to correspond to equation number uh, two over here. And the reason why is because uh, all other graphs over here, uh, your z component t is here is unbounded, here is t component is unbounded, and here is unbounded. Means when your parameter t is going to change from zero to plus infinity, then definitely t will go to infinity, so z goes to infinity, and for all other equations. So the only one 
a z where your z is uh, bounded when t increases is going to be uh, this equation over here because when t is getting bigger, bigger, and bigger, and since d uh, belongs to uh, denominator, then your value of z is going to get smaller, smaller, smaller. And the biggest value of z, by the way, it's when uh, t is equal to zero, so z is equal to one. Okay, so that's why uh, we already eliminated uh, three graphs. For the next step, let's take a look at this equation over here. I can see for the equation number six, my x is strictly bigger than zero, and my y is strictly bigger, uh, strictly bigger or equal than zero because they're equal to cosine square and sine square uh, t correspondingly. And for this graph over here, your x and y are allowed to be negative. Uh, for this graph over here, if you will take this branch, this branch is going to belong to uh, the half uh, space when x is negative. So this graph also doesn't work. So the only graph for which your x and y uh, are going to be in the negative is going to be graph number three over here. So that's why I know that graph number three is going to be equal to the equation six. And finally, we're left with two graphs and I need to figure out which of this graph works. And uh, we can find the difference. For example, uh, when I'm going to take the graph over here, that for this graph or, uh, over here, my y is strictly bigger or equal than zero. If you're going to take a careful look, when one of the branches is getting bigger, bigger and bigger, it still is going to stay on the positive side of y. And, uh, and here you can see we need to choose between y is equal to sine t and y equal to this expression. And here's obviously this expression over here is strictly bigger than zero. And y over here can be positive or negative. So that's why for the equation, uh, for the graph number five, uh, we have the corresponding equation three. So we down this graph five, and in this case, we have five, three. And finally, we have our last graph number four, which is going to correspond to equation number five. And you can see why, because uh, your z is always positive. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And bye-bye.